Let's talk about accessing data by priority. So for context, we'll consider the emergency room example. In that example, we're actually tracking two different things. We're tracking both the patient and also some assessment of their urgency or the degree of priority for that patient's treatment. Uh, we want to be able to access items based on the highest priority first. Let's talk about operations that we may need to support for this problem. So we'll need to add incoming items to our collection of things waiting to be treated or processed. So we'll have to keep track of both the patient and their measure of priority. We want to be able to identify and treat and remove the highest priority items so they can be processed, treated, essentially. Uh, we may also want to peek ahead and see who the next person who has high priority is. So in the emergency room context, this could be used to uh, help uh, stage supplies so their treatment's ready to go when it's their turn. We may want to identify if there's still patients that need to be treating, treated. Are, are we done yet? And we also may need to change the priority of an existing item. So if a patient's in the waiting room waiting for their treatment and they take a sudden turn for the worse, we may want to increase their priority over other people also currently in the waiting room. So we've used the term priority quite a bit. So let's talk about what we actually mean by priority. Uh, so basically, by priority, we mean something that can be used for some sort of an ordering. And there are lots of different valid choices that could be used here. So take a minute, think about some examples of things that could be used to identify um, whether one thing should be treated before another. For the examples that we're going to be doing here, we're going to focus on using integers. So basically, you can kind of uh, associate a, a specific numeric value with every patient, and uh, some values will represent higher priorities than other values. So how do we decide that? There are actually kind of two major options when using numbers for priorities. You could pick a, a high number representing the highest priority or a low number representing the highest priority. Uh, it's actually pretty common in computing to end up using the lower number to represent a better option or a higher priority option. So that's actually what we're going to do. Both of these alternatives occur in, in practice. Um, and it's kind of arbitrary which one we pick right now. But for now, we will stick with the idea of a lower number being better. And so that kind of implies that negative infinity represents the highest possible uh, priority that we could have. So in this context, the concept of data represents the patient. So we'll have some sort of a, a bundle that would represent both the patient and their overall priority. Now let's start moving towards programming languages. Let's think about how to represent this as an abstract data type in Java. We'll use the letters T using Java's generic system as a stand-in for the type of data that's going to be stored in our priority queues. So you can kind of think of T as somewhat similar to an interface. It's really a, a generic. It just represents a, um, an unknown data type that will be filled in at some later time. We'll assume that T implements the comparable interface. So the comparable interface just provides a single method, uh, int compare to, and uh, you give it some other item to compare to. So the basic idea here is that Classes that support this interface will provide this method called compareTo. It'll return an integer, and it allows one item to call the compareTo method and pass in an other item to, uh, to be compared against. So this gives us kind of the notion of less than, equal to, and greater than. So if the integer returned is zero, that kind of indicates that we would consider the item that called compare to and the argument that was passed in to compare to to be equal. If the value returned is less than zero, if it's negative, that means we would expect, we would consider the item that called compare to to be less than or before the item that was passed in as the argument, the other item. And uh, finally, if it returns a number that's greater than zero, we would consider the 
um, object that called compare to to be greater to be after or greater than the item that was passed in as an argument to compare to. Most of our examples today will focus on integers, and conveniently, the integer class implements the comparable interface. OK, so let's be a little bit more specific about the operations and how they might be defined in Java. If we were creating a priority queue interface, what might they look like? So we would have our insert operation that will be given some new piece of data to add to our priority queue. We'll have our extract minimum operation, which will remove and return the highest priority item. And remember, for now, we're considering lower numbers to be higher priority. We would also have our peak operation. So this will allow us to look at or identify what the highest priority item is without specifically removing it. Um, so it returns an item of type T. And here it's referred to as peak min because again, we're dealing with a priority queue where the minimum value represents the highest priority. We would have an is empty operation that returns true if we've processed everything in our priority queue. OK, those are kind of the fundamental four operations for a priority queue. Sometimes, in some implementations, these go by other names. Um, so for example, the Zybooks example uh, used the terms push and pop for uh, inserting and extracting, respectively.